If there's one thing you can learn from studying history, it's this. The past was a scary place. People of days gone by did horrible things in horrible ways, and they used rather terrifying tools to do so. These are dangerous items people used from the past you'd never want to try. Number 15. Rotary Phone For those who never actually tried one of these things, rotary phones look very complicated. Actually, they're really not. They're about as simple a device as you can get, but our modern day cell phones are just so much easier, you know? Here's a basic outline of how rotary phones work. You put your finger on the digit you want and rotate to the fixed finger stop position. Then you do that for the rest of the number. The rotating wheel sends the specified electrical pulse and decodes it into a digit, allowing you to contact the number that you're looking for. It's both incredibly simple and surprisingly complex, and anybody under the age of 50 will probably hate it. It's a far cry from picking up the phone and pushing a few buttons, that's for sure. And yet, it isn't. It's weird. The rotary phone is kind of a paradox. It's overwhelmingly simple, and yet our stupid brains find it very complicated. We've truly become a society of finger push number, make call. We're like cavemen with electrical clubs. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. If rumors are to be believed, the photo on the left showcases a modern recreation of a product that apparently existed in 1830. Now, given the original is only mentioned in texts and documents, historians have done their best to recreate what they think it might have looked like. Personally, we have to wonder... Surely they got it wrong because this looks very dangerous. Or maybe historians have misunderstood what this thing even is. Either way, whatever it was intended for, it looks very dangerous and I would not want to try it. As always, comment down below with the hashtag juicy topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 14. Typewriters. Now I have to flag this in advance. Tom Hanks will disagree with everything I'm about to say here. He loves a typewriter. Some people just love the old clickety-clack sound that comes with it, and you know, that's fine, but there are problems with this device. The typewriter is the OG word processor. Sure, it didn't have a talking paper clip, and it couldn't point out how poor your spelling is, but it got the job done. Here's the problem, though. If you made an error while typing on a typewriter, things got very, very messy. You can't just hit the backspace and wipe it out. On many typewriters, the backspace simply puts an X in its place, so you either have to hammer on the letter you intended, resulting in one bold letter in an otherwise typical word, or you just had to continue on with a weird X in the middle. My point is it's complicated. Typewriters are about as simple a writing implement as you can get without resorting to pen and paper, but there are obvious issues here. Thankfully, Tom Hanks has bought up most of the world's supplies, so you'll likely never even see one in the wild. I wonder how he got mail on a typewriter. Writer. Number 13. Old Desktop Computers Need I say more? The old desktops of the 1990s were some of the most bulky and frankly noisy computers that many of us will ever have to deal with again. From AOL keywords to the awkward installation of Flash, it was kind of a nightmare. Thankfully, the problems of the 90s desktops are not problems any longer. Those awkward AOL keywords have been replaced by Google search, Flash is now being phased out out altogether, and best of all, you don't need to hear the horrible sound when you turn your computer on for the first time. All my 90s kids know what I'm talking about. It was like your computer was screaming out in agony and then everything was fine. Until of course you tried to do anything online and had to wait hours and hours for your 90s internet to catch up. Ah, 
memories. So yeah, the 1990s desktop computers were definitely an experience, but thankfully today we can just take it out of the box and we're pretty much done. No screeching, no keywords, no bad internet, mostly, anyway. No David Hasselhoff fan sites. It's perfect. Number 12. Twin Bell Alarm Clock it's a classic trope of Hollywood movies, the alarm clock with two bells. Is there anything worse than the idea of being abruptly woken up by the ear-deafening sound of two tiny tin bells being rattled? I don't think so. Until the digital clock started to become more prevalent, these were the go-to alarm clocks for decades. People would set their alarms before bed, tuck themselves in, get to sleep, and then experience the grim misery of having what is essentially a tiny tin bomb on their bedside wake them up for another bleak day at work. What a true blessing it must have been to wake up and know that in just a few short hours you'd be preparing to suffer through the misery of yet another tinny massacre in the morning. Such joy. Thankfully, today we have digital clocks, smartphones, and even apps that can wake us up gently at the end of our sleep cycles. I think we should all just be eternally grateful that we never have to hear another tinny calamity in the morning. Number 11. Primus Stove The Primus Stove may not be very well known outside of the baby boomer era, but it's a very fascinating piece of technology to look at for one reason. The Primus Stove was a kerosene-based stove that somehow became a worldwide sensation. Yeah, seriously. The Primus Stove was the first pressurized burner kerosene stove developed in 1892. It was based on the design of the handheld blowtorch, and it was a massive, massive success all over the world. In fact, the use of kerosene as the main gas turned out to be a publicity blessing in a way that it probably wouldn't be today. You can see immediately, you can see that the uh, flame spreaders the stove was so reliable and durable that it became the go-to stove for explorers and adventurers in freezing cold environments. Several people exploring the North and South Poles were reported to be fans of the device, while even Tenzing and Hillary took a stove up on Mount Everest in 1953. Which honestly seems very brave to me, considering the era in which it was invented, the Primus stove is a pretty impressive creation. I mean, it works in freezing cold conditions. That's… seriously, how did not a single person die from this thing? Number 10. Pocket Watch Life today is so convenient. If you want to know what time it is, all you gotta do is pull out your phone and look. It's as easy as it could possibly be. But at one time, the only way to know the time was to carry a portable clock around with you, in your pocket. Pocket watches were developed in the 16th century and remained popular until just after World War I, when the military began designing trench watches. Soon enough, the wristwatch was all the rage among the youngsters, and soon everybody was wearing the time on their wrist. Isn't it amazing how technology works? Still, the old traditionalists continued to sing the praises of the pocket watch, and even today you'll still be able to find many a hipster who proudly carries one with them. How fun for someone, maybe. Thankfully, none of us have to worry about the pocket watch's unwieldy chains or the constant fear of misplacing it. We can all just enjoy our phones and smartwatches instead. What can I say? I love technology. Number 9. Charcoal Iron Back in the day, if people wanted their clothes perfectly presented, it was a long and challenging procedure. Then came the charcoal iron, a device designed to press and sharpen up those creased and messy clothes. Assuming, of course, that you know how to use it, the charcoal iron dates back to at least 1890. And unlike our modern electrical irons, it used natural materials to generate heat. These irons would hold embers from wood or coal fires, heating up the tool until it was hot enough to press clothes. However, this particular device is one of the most complex and unwieldy to use, thanks to, uh, well, everything. To use it requires a lot of technical know-how, including how to use it without smudging the clothes or getting yourself burned by the ashes themselves. But if you can figure all that out, out. You're all set. 
I don't think I even have to explain why our modern equivalent is better. This is just so complicated and dangerous that it's not even a contest. Not to mention that you can't smudge your clothes with our modern, wonderful, beautiful irons, unless you happen to rub crayons on it before it's turned on. My mom is still mad at me for that one. Number 8. Paper Quarter if you were born pre-2000, you'll definitely know what this thing is. The tape recorder is one of the landmark inventions of the 20th century. A huge technical achievement. And I, for one, am so glad we never have to use one of these again. A tape recorder is obviously a device that records and plays back sound using magnetic tape for storage. This technology originated around 1930, when German scientists used paper tape with oxide lacquer to it, rather than magnetic tape. Eventually, scientists and inventors managed to build upon these developments until they finally created what we now know as magnetic tape recordings. Decades later, they'd use this technology to invent videotape, eventually leading to VHS, and, again, millennials and older generations will undoubtedly remember that period with great nostalgic fondness. They truly were blockbuster nights. The tape recorder was unquestionably one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century, but it was much more complicated than the current click and record technology. If the tape ever got stuck in the player and came unspooled, well, that wasn't gonna be a fun day for ya. Number 7. Oil Lamp it can be incredibly jarring to look through history and see that, for many, the only light they had in their homes came from candles and oil lamps. Now, of course, you can basically have your entire apartment lit by a billboard outside. The oil lamp goes back centuries, all the way back to ancient periods of history. This is the Fuerhan Lantern. It is 10 inches tall. And here's where it gets interesting. They weren't all lit by the same fuel. Not at all. Some lamps could be fueled by plants, like nuts or seeds, while others were fueled by butter or fats, like whale blubber. But as time went on, they were replaced by more sturdy and reliable oil lamps, such as the Argand lamp in the late 1700s and the kerosene lamp in 1850. The kerosene lamp, of course, would continue to be used until a electricity finally took over in the 20th century. I guess the biggest problem with the oil lamp is the problem of fuel. If you had the misfortune of running out of fuel, you better get used to life in the dark. Today, of course, we can electronically turn on our house lights when you're in a different country. So that's good for us, at least. Number 6. Treadle Sewing Machine now let me specify, a treadle sewing machine is a machine that is powered by a foot pedal pushed back and forth by the operator, as opposed to just being pressed down. It's hard to explain, but it basically requires your foot to move as it would on a bicycle pedal. It's kind of wild to think about this, but these particular machines go all the way back to almost the very beginning of technology. They were one of the first inventions ever made, long before factories began manufacturing the clothes we all know and wear. Today, of course, they're thought of as antiques and can be found in auction houses and antique dealers worldwide. I think it's improbable that anybody is still sewing with one of these particular machines, but anything's possible, I guess. Modern sewing machines, thankfully, require less work and are much easier to operate, but I guess there's nothing like a classic piece of equipment, right? Just make sure you prepare your foot for the inevitable, repetitive strain injury you'll get from making a t-shirt. Number 5. Hip Pens we take pens for granted. All we have to do in the 21st century is pick up a ballpoint and we're set. But at one time, it was not that simple. At all. We're not going back as far as the ink and quill, but it's not a million miles away. A dip pen is basically a metal nib, not unlike you'd find in a fountain pen, mounted in a handle or a holder, so it's basically an old school ballpoint pen without any of the convenience. Unlike a fountain pen, which has a kind of ink reservoir inside the holder, the dip pen requires the user to recharge the ink from a nearby inkwell. So you get to use the pen and also you get to work for the honor. Isn't that nice for ya? 
what a time to be alive. Dip pens first emerged in the early 19th century as quills began to fade out, but they didn't last too long. Eventually, fountain pens took over, and eventually we were blessed with what we now consider to be normal ballpoint pens. Thank goodness for that. Number 4. The Robberval Balance if you're an avid baker, you'll have some kind of scale in your home, but what kind of scale is it? Are you a modern, swinging dial kind of person, or do you prefer a more old school vibe? The Robberville Balance is actually that very old school weighing scale we all know. First presented in 1669 by the French mathematician Gilles Person de Robberville, the idea is that the scales are evenly balanced until something is added to one side. When the scales are tipped, the user has to somehow add or subtract more objects until they're evenly balanced. It's not the worst idea in the world, but it's a heck of a lot more complicated than just putting some stuff on a digital scale and being told exactly what it is. Speaking as a mathematical idiot, this is a lot of work. There's not even an argument to be made for this being better than our modern equivalent. It's just not. This is obviously a very smart device and Mr. French person was very clever to make it, but we have digital devices now that do all of this work for me. Number 3. Horse-drawn vehicle Okay, so if you've ever been to certain tourist hotspots around the world, you'll know that the horse-drawn carriage isn't entirely in the past. But I'm not talking about a little ride here and there. At one point in time, this was one of the only ways to get around. Centuries ago, just about everybody got around using a horse and vehicle. Whether it was a small cart designed to transport goods, a wagon used to transport bigger quantities, or a horse-drawn carriage to deliver very important people to their destinations, they were everywhere. And call me crazy, but I don't imagine it was the most pleasant of experiences for anybody. I mean, the horses probably aren't thrilled about it, the roads back then were rocky at best, and the wheels of these things always looked questionable, it seems like a great way to get whiplash. Today, thankfully, we have cars and trucks and trains and all manners of vehicles, so we don't have to experience this kind of discomfort. We also have the blessing of the ox cord, so we can drive and sing all the wonderful sea shanties we want. Live in the dream. Number 2. Toy Washing Machine no, believe it or not, this is not an old school torture device. Maybe. I'm sure some enthusiastic kids found a way to make it one, but its actual function is much tamer. This is a washing machine for toys. Just what every kid wanted. In the 1980s, long before Minecraft was a thing, young boys and girls would play with dolls. And inevitably, those dolls would get dirty or dusty, or the kids would just decide they wanted to do the washing up, because as we all know, it's more fun to pretend than to actually do it. So they got one of these devices, a smaller version of the actual device, used in homes at the period. The idea is that you crank the handle and the clothes spin around inside. Once they're washed, you press them through the device on the side, and bingo, you have fresh clothes. Sadly, I'm an adult, so I don't know the equivalent of this for modern kids, but I'm sure today's kids aren't that excited to pretend to do the housework. I mean, that's that's just my assumption, for all I know there's a kid who's just opened up a laundry mat on Animal Crossing. Number 1. Quackerica I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that most of you have never heard of, let alone seen, the Guacarica. And sure, at first glance, it kind of looks like some kind of cooking implement, but no, this is music, my friend. The guacarica is a percussion instrument made from the trunk of a small palm tree. The guacarica is the tube, hollow on the inside with carved ridges outside. When played with the fork, you get a unique scratching sound that makes the guacarica such an iconic South American instrument. The instrument was initially invented by Native American Indians in Colombia and designed to replicate the guacarica bird singing. I can't say whether that's accurate, but it's definitely a very distinctive sound. Today, it's very much 
much affiliated with folk music throughout Colombia and can often be heard, well, everywhere. The guacarica is not a well-known instrument all over the world, but it's undoubtedly one of the most iconic sounds in Colombian music. If you're into percussion that sounds pretty scratchy, this is the instrument for you, my friend. Have you ever used any of these old items? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.